Hi there, Matt Wade here, and today I thought we'd talk about the new polls feature during Microsoft Teams meetings. So let's jump right in. All right, so one of the new features that just rolled out for Microsoft Teams during meetings and being able to set up beforehand is the ability to add a Microsoft form to use as a poll. So while this is called a poll during a meeting, it's actually a Microsoft form. So I'm gonna just jump right into Teams and we're gonna kind of dive into it uh, and show it off right as we go through. This is the first time I'm actually kind of checking it out. So, you know, let's stumble along with me and, and see just how it works. So I have a, an appointment here that's created called weekly staff meeting. Uh, to make this thing available to me, I have to go add it as a tab and the tab is only available to me through the chat ahead of the meeting. You'll see this meeting is far in the future, at least uh, as I'm filming this. So I'm gonna go forward and click on this chat with participants and it'll bring this up as an option. So to add the form, I have to click the plus sign up here and choose forms. And this is where I can Add the app. Okay, so now I have forms added as part of the meeting. And from here I can create a poll before or during the meeting. Uh, you would probably wanna create the form before the meeting just so you're not stealing people's time or wasting their time while you're going through it. Unless the, the idea was to actually create the form and the poll during the meeting as part of the meeting itself. But you know that's uh, not generally the most common thing. Uh, so I would say I do this ahead of time. So open up that chat for the meeting before the meeting, set up the poll, and then you can actually run through the poll during the meeting. So let's go ahead and click save. Okay, so here I have the form tab and I can go ahead and click create new poll. I have no justification for the fact they're using the word poll versus form, especially since Microsoft Forms isn't even really good at forms. It's good at surveys and questionnaires and quizzes, but so be it. So let's put in a question here. Um, where should we have Andrea's anniversary luncheon? Let's assume the world is normal again and people go out to lunch a lot. Uh, let's say Johnny's. couple of local favorites from where I'm from. So you can look these up yourself if you'd like. And let's just keep it with one question for now, just for the sake of it. If you need to learn how to use Microsoft Forms, there are so many resources out there on this. Uh, this is all pretty much out of the box. Just uh, go with it as you need to. Um, I'm going to keep, uh, let's see, share results automatically after voting. Sure, keep responses anonymous. Could be really good for a big meeting where you don't really need to share that information. Um, or uh, perhaps it's like a, not a big meeting, but you want to ensure that people are not, you know, let's say it's a, I don't know, maybe it could be one of those HR reviews of a new manager and you wanna see what the reviews are of that manager and you wanna share those results with the manager to say, hey, this was your group of uh, 15 people that you manage and those people voted in this respect or this direction. Uh, this is a good way to do that. So I'm gonna not do that though for this case. So we're now creating the poll. Okay, so now you see uh, this is now in a draft state. I actually have to launch it for it to be available and <clears throat> I can edit it, I can delete it, but let's keep it as is. Now I can launch it before the meeting, but that doesn't really make sense. I want this to pop up in the meeting itself so everybody else sees it as well. And it doesn't happen until I press launch. So this will be available for me to launch as the organizer of the meeting whenever the meeting is going on. Uh, and I'm gonna do that during the meeting itself so I can say, hey, it's now time to decide where we're gonna have Andrea's uh, you know, luncheon, anniversary luncheon, lets everybody vote and we'll get those results in. Okay, so now I've joined this meeting as myself and as another user named Megan. So what you're seeing right now is Megan has joined this meeting and that's what I'm viewing. And if I swipe over, you'll see her view and that's when you see my picture. So it's two different people logged in under two different browsers and it works for the sake of uh, giving a demonstration here. But I'm gonna jump back because she's an attendee to this. I am the organizer and the presenter. And you'll notice up in my toolbar, I have a new icon and that is the Microsoft Forms icon. So here is where I have the ability to launch this form. Okay, and here is that question. So. 
from Megan's standpoint, if I slide over to her experience for the meeting, you'll see there isn't really anything here. Uh, there's a chat. It shows you, um, you know, who's in the meeting uh, and uh, when they joined, all that kind of stuff. But you don't see anything related to the form. But if I go back to my view, I do see my polls and I can launch this. So here's this question that I'm now going to push out to the world. So I'm going to say launch and I'm going to give it a moment to actually go out to everybody. Okay, now you can see it's live, it's no longer draft, and it actually pops up for me to answer too. It's not just for everybody else. So I'm gonna give it uh, this response and click submit. Now this is me as the organizer. I apparently have the ability to answer too because this is a full-on democracy, not just a meritorious uh, democracy. And you can see here what the responses are. So uh, Red Front right now has the highest votes because I voted for that. Now let's see what Megan sees. So on Megan's side, you can see in the chat, the poll pops up. So she has the ability here to respond and let's say she goes for Delhi and Brew and she clicks submit. Now the responses have been updated to show that it's 50-50 between what I voted for, which was Redfront, and what, what she voted for, which was Delhi and Brew. And I'm assuming that if she were logged into the uh, desktop app, which she's not, she's using the web version of Teams in this case, that she would see this in the middle of the screen. But because it's the modern meeting experience, she sees it in the chat, that looks like it must be the way that they work around it. You can even see that it's the Forms app uh, that is sending this message as a um, coming from me, basically. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty sweet, actually, that they're updating the adaptive card here to show the response, which is pretty slick. Very, uh, very nice way to show off these uh, these responses. And that also means that that information is available now in the chat going forward. So if I go back to me and I open up the chat, I have the same information, it looks like, which is great because that means I now have a history of this and everybody from the meeting can go look at it. Even if you missed the meeting, you should most likely be able to see this information. I would assume I'm not going to test that because I just assume that the, uh, the chat, as long as it's an internal meeting, uh, when it comes to external people coming into a chat, those chats can uh, be difficult to manage and sometimes access, but very, very cool. I'm going to click done here. And uh, yeah, so now I'm going to create one more poll and I'm going to do it real quick and see what that looks like if I were to add another one. And I'm going to do this from the Teams app, not the meeting experience, but from the Teams experience. All right. Okay, so it looks like each poll is limited to one question. You don't actually have a list of forms where in Microsoft Forms you're creating multiple questions. So that's a bit of a limitation, but uh, it's still definitely doable. Let's jump back into the meeting and I'm going to go into the forms tab here, list my polls, and I'm going to launch this new one, which the question is how many days a week should we work? And actually it's pretty cool that I can see which ones are live and which ones are not. So here's my draft, I'm gonna launch that, which means I can have these set up ahead of time, ready to launch whenever the questions are ready to, to show off or to, uh, to bring up during the actual event. Now, one thing you can't see on my other screen right now is that I'm getting notifications from Teams telling me, hey, uh, this thing popped up because it's part of the chat, which is actually pretty uh, nice. So let's say I prefer a four day work week because hey, you know, all that time over the last 100 years, all that productivity increases, I think we're supposed to get four day work weeks. That's what I was always promised based on economics and whatnot. And if I jump back over to um, Megan's view, I still see the original one. And let's say that she's a workaholic, she wants to work six days a week and she can submit the six. Now let's look at a different example of what type of form you can have. So let's uh, take a look here. Uh, the options here are literally just polls. So it's just multiple choice questions. So let's say I want to ask um, hours, what hours of operation do you prefer? Let's say we do nine to five, eight to four, 10 to six, eight to six, okay? So you are limited to what you can actually create here. These are not fill in the blank options. Uh, these are not the um, uh, rating options, the one to five scale options. So it is literally just simple, you know, uh, uh, polls. So I, I, I guess I kind of understand why they're calling them polls here because it does specifically just mean 
choose from these options here. So I'm gonna save this. This will be one more poll that I can launch during my uh, meeting. So this shows you that you can actually use the um, uh, the chat or the sorry the the tab for this section of the meeting during the meeting if you want so if you're the organizer and you have access to create this stuff maybe you're not always presenting during the meeting you want to be able to actually create this stuff while somebody else is working maybe you didn't prep ahead of time or maybe the questions and answers are actually dependent upon what happens during the meeting uh, that's actually kind of nice because people that are presenting can be doing the work of the presenting facilitating whatever you can be in the background working on the polls and sort of organizing this through so you can see this new new uh, poll that I made is a, um, a checkbox and not a radio button. So you can choose as many as you want. So let's go ahead and we'll click done on that poll. Uh, let's relaunch the poll pane here because I think it has to pull in that new poll that I had created. And let's see what we have. So we have the two here that are already uh, live, but let's launch that last one. Okay. So that went launched. And let's say, I do not want to work eight to six. I'll take any of those other eight hour days. And I'll press submit. And if I go over here, Megan also has the option to respond to this. And you can see here that the percentages with uh, check boxes will never make sense because uh, right now it's 33% and like I'm only one person but I voted three times. so. Uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Let's say that she's an early bird and she prefers that and she just wants to vote once, so be it. She can do that. So right now, that's winning. Now let's make one live right in the meeting itself. If I scroll back up, you can see I can do create new from right here. That brings up a window that looks just like the one from the tab in the, uh, the, team exper or the meeting experience in Teams itself. Uh, this is where I can make a new one, let's say. How many layers? of management should there be above you. And let's say that doesn't, let's say it does not allow um, multiple answers. And let's put a lot of answers in here and see what that looks like. All right, so it looks like there's a maximum of six answers that you can even put in here, which is really good to know. And you can't have one because somebody is above me and in this situation, I'm the boss and you ain't firing me for that. So I'm gonna press save and Megan can go, f uh, she can uh, go ahead and fill out this response, as can I. So I will go ahead and click launch and I will answer myself. And let's say I want that promotion. So let's get rid of everybody above or everybody that doesn't need to be above me. <clears throat> and we'll say two, okay. And actually, let's just show off real quick what happens if you don't submit in time. So she can choose one of these and submit, but I'm gonna say from my side, I'm gonna say done. Does she have the ability to still vote? Let's see. She does. So that done is actually just on, the, on my side as part of um, getting rid of it so I can go off and do something else. It does not mean that the uh, the poll itself is turned off and not available. Now, I can, that's why, close the poll so she can no longer respond or nobody else can respond. Now, there's nobody else in this meeting at this point, so nobody else is able to do anything with it, but um, you can see the status is right here. Now, I'm just a little bit zoomed in. Let me zoom out a little bit and see what it says. Better yet, Let's open up the chat directly and see what that says. Closed, okay. And some of these other ones are still live. So it is on the organizer of the meeting to go forward and clean up those, um, those polls. You can also delete them. So let's say that I did not like the answers I got about the hours of operation. Perhaps people need to learn to work a little bit more. I can go ahead and delete that, which I assume means that those people will not be able to see it once I'm done. I don't even see it here any longer. So let's see what she has. And I'm curious what the chat says, if it says deleted. Yeah, it doesn't. It just says that there was a chat message here that was updated, interesting. So this is again coming from the forms app. So if this was a user, it would say that that message was deleted, which is interesting to know. 
So anyway, that is a brief overview of how to use the new poll feature in a Microsoft Teams meeting. It is super simple. Again, I just learned how to do this right as I was filming this live, because hey, why not? It just came out the other day, uh, and I might as well play around with it and just see what happens. So hopefully you found that useful. If you have any um, interesting use cases or if you've been playing with it yourself, please feel free, drop some comments uh, down below and let us know how your experience has been, any of your, uh, I don't know, best practices or lessons learned or what landmines maybe some people should avoid. Um, and hey, if you like these kinds of tips and tricks, I have something great for you. I have a book coming out. Uh, the book is called Teach Yourself Visually Microsoft Teams. It is going to be a field guide for everybody using Microsoft Teams. Uh, just on the everyday user standpoint, it is gonna be chock full of tips, tricks, best practices, screenshot heavy step by step it's going to be great if you like this kind of stuff or you have colleagues peers friends other people in your life that could just use some of the basics or just some of those really good nuggets that can help people make that much more on microsoft teams uh, you can uh, pre-order it now through amazon you can get it from the link below and with that thank you so much for watching as always a like and subscribe is much appreciated Happy polling during your uh, upcoming Microsoft Teams meetings. And if you don't have it yet, be patient. It's on its way.